आगजात सहगण रघुनाथ विधम तम सजीव साइत सवधुत परजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादा सहगण ललिता शिव शाखांदिता हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Our congratulations to again to all the devotees for having organized the Rath Yatra which went off very well. Special thanks to the Russian Kirtan team who kept the Kirtan going enthusiastically singing and dancing even after several hours. I think they got a little exhausted by that. Uh yesterday in describing in brief some of the pastimes of some of the devotees i forgot to uh describe about raghunandan thako so i can say today yes there was a special day for remembering him but we can always remember the vaishnavas at any day a uh, one particular pastime of raghunandan thako is uh very well known uh he was from srikanda which is so the present day uh great center of vaishnavism uh, so his father was engaged in worshiping krishna deity of krishna and uh, one day his father had to go away on some business some mm-hmm. some work to do so he told his young son raghunandana that you you have to do all the regular service now to the deity while i'm away you have to offer the food to the lord so that he can eat and then do the arati and all these things so raghunandan a young boy innocent young boy when he came to offer the food to the lord he he according to the he did according to the procedure that his father had told him so he brought in the offering plate and did the prokshanam and all the required things did the offering and then uh, he sat there expecting krishna to eat mm-hmm. he said i he said to krishna i did everything my father told me so now you should eat and krishna just stood there he said please eat please it's all meant for you eat it <laughs> then he became very sorry thinking oh i must have done something wrong maybe i didn't offer it properly so then he implored krishna implored means uh, kakuti like that praying in a in a very plaintive way mm-hmm. do you have that word kakuti not maybe it's a bengali word not a sanskrit word um he said please if you don't take uh then my father will be very upset with me because he told me to feed give the food to you for you to eat mm-hmm. because he didn't know any high philosophy that angana yasya sakalendriya vritti manti krishna eats with his eyes So Krishna became obliged and he had to actually eat the offering with his with his hands and put it in his mouth. So then the young boy was very satisfied and Krishna was very satisfied also. But when his father came back he said uh, did you do everything you offered everything did the arati everything and he said yes okay so uh, where's the prasad He said, "Well, Krishna ate everything. He didn't leave anything." What do you mean? Well, you told me to offer it to Krishna so he could eat it. So he ate it. His father became suspicious that maybe the boy himself had eaten it all, but he didn't say anything. So again, he had to go on another day. His father had to go out at midday for some work, and again the whole same scene unfolded. His father became doubtful that my boy is making a great offense. He's eating the food which is meant for the Lord. Uh but he thought well maybe what he's saying is tr- he seems to be very sincere maybe the Krishna's actually directly eating it. Who knows. So on another day he told Raghunanda okay I'm going out again this Narahari I'm going out again. But the, he didn't actually go out he just hid himself so the boy couldn't see him so that he could see what's going on and then again uh, raghunandan implored 
you please, you have to eat, you must eat. And uh, and Krishna ate. Then afterwards his father said, actually I'm worshipping Krishna all these years, but you're, you're so much more dear to Krishna than me, because Krishna ever never ate like that for me. Okay, so that's a well-known story about Raghunandana. Now I'll read uh, the, some verses from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Adi Lila, Chapter 6, The Glories of Sri Advaita Acharya, Sri Advaita Mahima. Vanditang Srimad Advaita Acharyam Adbhuta Cheshtitam Yasya prasadad agyopi tatsvarupam nirupayet. Ah. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Advaita, Sri Advaita Acharya, whose activities are all wonderful. By his mercy, even a foolish person can describe his characteristics. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Ah. I'll go on to the next one. Pancha shloke kohilo shri nittananda tatta shloka doye kohi adaita cha jema hatta. So the author Krishna Kaviraj is referring back to the previous chapter. In five verses I have described the principle of Lord Nityananda, Nityananda tattva. Then in the following two verses I describe the glories of Sri Advaita Acharya. Mahavishnu jagat karta maya yaya srijat yadaha tasyavatara evayam advaita acharyam ishvaraha. Lord Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of Mahavishnu, whose main function is to create the cosmic world through the actions of Maya. Advaitang harena advaitad acharyam bhakti sankshanat. Bhakta Vatara Mishamtam Advaita Acharya Mashraye. Because he is non different from Hari, the Supreme Lord, he is called Advaita. And because he propagates the cult of devotion, he is called Acharya. He is the Lord and the incarnation of the Lord's devotee. Therefore I take shelter of him. Advaita Charya Goshai Shakhati Shah Jaha Mohima Nahe Jibe Gocha. Sri Advaita Acharya is indeed directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Yeah. If you listen very carefully, you can get exactly the same words. Here it said, Sakshat Ishvara. His glory is beyond the conception of ordinary living beings. Jaha Mahima Nahe Jibe Gosha. Mahabishnu Srishti Karen Jagadadi Karja. Taravatar Shakat Adaita Acharya Mahavishnu performs all the functions for the creation of the universes. Sri Advaita Acharya is his direct incarnation. Jai Purusha Srishti Sthiti Karen Mayai Ananta Brahmanda Srishti Karen Lilai That Purusha creates and maintains with his external energy. He creates a new innumerable universes in his pastimes. Ichayananta Murti Karen Prakash Eto Ek Murte Karen Brahmande Prabesh By his will he manifests himself in unlimited forms in which he enters each and every universe. She Purusha Angsha Adaita Nahi Kitchub Hed Sharira Bisheshtar Nahik Bicheid. Sri Advaita Acharya is a plenary portion of that Purusha and so is not different from him. Indeed, Sri Advaita Acharya is not separate but is another form of that Purusha. Shahai Karenta Loya Pradhan Koti Brahmanda Karen Ichai Nirman. He, Advaita Acharya, helps in the pastimes of the Purusha. With whose material energy and by whose will he creates innumerable universes. Jagat Mangala Daita Mangal Gunadham Mangal Charitya Shada Mangal Jarnam 
Being a reservoir of all auspicious attributes, Sri Advaita Acharya is all auspicious for the world. His characteristics, activities and names are always auspicious. And actually, um, he was known in early life as Mangal. That was his name. Koti Angsha Koti Shakti Koti Abhatar Etoloyas Sri Jaipuru Shakal Shangsha Mahavishnu creates the entire material world with millions of his parts, energies and incarnations. Maya Doiche Dui Angsha Nimitta Upadan Maya Nimitta Hetu Upadan Pradhan Purushishar Oiche Dvimurti Hoya Vishra Srishti Kare Nimitta Upadan Aloya Just as the external energy consists of two parts, the efficient cause Nimitta and the material cause Upadan, Maya being the efficient cause and Pradhan the material cause, so Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, assumes two forms to create the material world with the efficient and material causes. You better read that. It's a bit, a bit tough. Two kinds of causes. Nimitta means uh, the willing cause, the, the one, the agency by what that is done. There's a long purport to this. And Upadan is the ingredients. The common example is given is that the cause of a clay pot is the potter, is one cause, and another cause is the clay. Apane purusha bishe nimita karan adeta rupe upadan hon narayan. Lord Vishnu himself is the efficient nimita cause of the material world, and Narayana in the form of Sri Advaita is the material cause upadan. Nimitang she kore teho maya te ikhon upadana daita karen brahmanda srijan. Lord Vishnu in his efficient aspect glances over the material energy and Sri Advaita as the material cause creates the material world. Jadapi shankamane pradhan karan jarahoite kabunahe jagad srijan. Although the Sankhya philosophy accepts that the material ingredients are the cause, the creation of the world never arises from dead matter. Nidja Shrishti Shakti Prabhu Sanchare Pradhane Ishare Shakti Tabe Hoye Tonirmane. The Lord infuses the material ingredients with his own creative potency. Then, by the power of the Lord, Ishvara Shakti, uh, creation takes place. Adaita rupe kare shakti sancharan ataiva adaita hoyen mukhya karan In the form of Advaita, he infuses the material ingredients with creative energy. Therefore, Advaita is the original cause of creation. Adaita chaja koti brahmande karta Ar ek ek murte brahmande bharata. <coughs> Sri Advaita Acharya is the creator of millions and millions of universes. And by his expansions as Garbhudakshai Vishnu, he maintains each and every universe. Shri Narayana Mukha Anga Adaita Anga Shabde Angshakari Karhe Bhagavata. Sri Advaita is the principal limb, Anga, of Narayana. Srimad Bhagavatam speaks of limb, Anga, as a plenary portion, Anksha, of the Lord. Narayana stramna hi sarvadehinam Atmasyadhi shakkhila loka sakshi Narayanangam narabhu jalayanat Jalayanat tachchapi sat O Lord of Lords, you are the seer of all creation. You are indeed everyone's dearest life. Are you not therefore my father Narayana? O O Lord of Lords, you are the seer of all creation. You are indeed everyone's dearest life. Are you not therefore my father Narayana? This is Brahma speaking. 
Narayan refers to one whose abode is in the water born from Nara, Garbhodakrishai Vishnu, and that Narayana is your plenary portion. All your plenary portions are transcendental. They are absolute and are not creations of Maya. Ishvara Onga Onsha Chidananda Mai Maya Shambandhanahi Eishloke Kai This verse describes that the limbs and plenary portions of the Lord are all spiritual. They have no relationship with the material energy. Onsha Na Kohia Kene Koho Tare Onga Ong sha hoi te onga jate hoi antaranga. Why has Sri Advaita been called a limb and not a part? The reason is that limb, anga, implies greater intimacy. Mahavishnu rong sha adaita gunadham ishvare abhed te adaita purnanam. Sri Advaita, who is a reservoir of virtues, Gunadham, is the main limb, Anga, of Mahavishnu. His full name is Advaita, for he is identical in all respects with that Lord. Purabe Jaiche Koilo Sharva Bishe Srijan Abhatari Koilo Ebe Bhakti Prabhartan. As he had formerly created all the universes, now he descended to introduce the path of Bhakti. Jiva Nishtarilo Krishna Bhakti Karidan Gita Bhagavate Koilo Bhakti Bekhan. He delivered all living beings by offering the gift of Krishna Bhakti. He explained the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in the light of devotional service. Bhakti Upadesha Binu Tanahi Karja Ataiva Nama Hoilo Adaita Achaja. Since he has no other occupation than to teach devotional service, his name is Advaita Acharya. Vaishnavera Guru Teho Jagate Arja Duina Milane Hoilo Advaita Acharya. He is the spiritual master of all devotees and is the most revered personality in the world. By a combination of these two names, his name is Advaita Acharya. Kamala Nayane Teho Jate Onga Onsha Kamala Karkari Pare Kamala Karkari Dhare Nama Avatangsha Since he is a limb or part of the lotus eyed Supreme Lord, he also bears the name Kamalaksha Ishara Sarupya Pai Parishadagan Chatur Bhuja Pita Bash Joyce Narayan. His associates have the same bodily features as the Lord. They all have four arms and are addressed in and, and are dressed in yellow garments like Narayana. Adeta Chaja Ishare Angsha Borja Tara Tattu Namaguna Shakali Aschaja. Sri Advaita Acharya is the principal limb of the Supreme Lord. His truths, name, this means tata, names and attributes are all wonderful. Jaha Tulasi Jale, Jaha Hunkare, Shvagarna Shahete Chaitanya Abhatare. He worshipped Krishna with tulsi leaves and water of the Ganga and called for him in a loud voice. Thus, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared on earth accompanied by his personal associate. Ja Dara Koilo Prabhu Kirtan Pracha Ja Dara Koilo Prabhu Jagatanishta It is through him, Advaita Acharya, that Lord Chaitanya spread the Sankirtan movement. And through him that he delivered the world. Acharya Goshair Guna Mohimapa Jiva Koti Kotai Paibek Tarpa Jiva Kita Kotai Paibek Tarpa The glory and attributes of Advaita Acharya are unlimited. How can the insignificant living entities fathom them? 
Acharya Goshai Chaitanya Mukha Anga Ar Ek Angata Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Acharya has a principal limb of Lord Chaitanya. Another limb of the Lord is Nityananda Prabhu. Prabhura Prabhur Upanga Shri Bhashadi Bhaktagon Hashta Mukha Netra Anga Chakra Da Chakra The devotees headed by Srivas are his smaller limbs. They are like his hands, face and eyes, and his disc and other weapons. So this refers to the Sangha Pangastra Parshadam. Eshabloya Chaitanya Prabhurbiha Eshabloya Karen Banchit Banchito Pracha. With all of them, Lord Chaitanya performed his pastimes, and with them he spread his mission. Madhavendra Purir Iho Shisha Egane Achajago Shaire Prabhu Guru Korimane. Thinking he, Sri Advaita Acharya, is a disciple of Sri Madhavendra Puri, Lord Chaitanya obeys him, respecting him as his spiritual master. Lokik Lilate Dharma Marjada Rakhan Stuti Bhakti Karenta Charan Bandhan To maintain the proper etiquette for the principles of religion, Lord Chaitanya bows down at the lotus feet of Sri Advaita Acharya with reverential prayers and devotion. Chaitanya Goshai Ke Acharya Kare Prabhu Gyan Aponake Karenta Dash Obhiman. Sri Advaita Acharya, however, considers Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu his master, and he thinks of himself as a servant of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Obhiman Muke Apona Pashare Krishna Dasha Hau Jibe Upadesha Kore. He forgets himself in the joy of that conception the conception of being a servant, and teaches all living entities, you are the servants of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, I'll take a little break here, and I'll come back in three or four minutes. The last one I read. The transcendental devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is so ecstatic that even the Lord himself plays the part of a devotee. Forgetting himself to be the Supreme, he personally teaches the whole world how to render service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then the next verse, Krishna Dash, Krishna Dasha Abhimane, Jayananda Shindhu, Koti Brahma Shukanahe Tarik Bindu. The conception of servitude to Sri Krishna, Krishna Dasha Abhimana, generates such an ocean of joy in the soul, Ananda Sindhu, that even the joy of oneness with the Absolute, if multiplied ten million times, could not compare to a drop of it. Okay. Krishna Dasha Abhimane Jayananda Sindhu Mui Shai Chaitanya Dash Arnitananda Dash Abhava Shamanahe Anatra Ananda. He says, Nityananda and I are servants of Lord Chaitanya. He says, Advaita Prabhu says, Nityananda and I are servants of Lord Chaitanya. Nowhere else is there such joy as that which is tasted in this emotion of servitude. Okay, I won't read the rest of the chapter. <clears throat> but I'll just summarize it. Uh, that <clears throat> in the rest of the chapter, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami describes how even uh, so many great personalities... They identify themselves as a servant of the Supreme Lord. Uh, he describes that uh, Loki or Lakshmi considers herself the maid servant of Krishna. Loki in Bengali, Loki. And uh, then the 
associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they all consider themselves his servants. Even Nanda Maharaj considers himself a servant. Evidence is offered from Shastra of this. And even Radha, who is known to be sometimes in loving competition with Krishna, ultimately she considers herself servant of Krishna. So this chapter, it's uh, describing the glories of Advaita Acharya. But if you examine this chapter carefully, you can see it's it has a particular structure. It's not just some haphazard statements. Uh, first of all, it establishes Advaita as being non-different from the Supreme Lord. Therefore, he's called Advaita. By his, uh, through him, millions of universes are created. So we can just get some idea of his greatness by hearing this. But actually, it's beyond our imagination. So he is non-different from the Supreme Lord. But... At the same time, he finds that the position of servitorship to the Supreme Lord is most relishable. And he teaches this to the people of the world. Therefore, he's called Acharya. So, first of all, it's established his greatness. Then it's established how he doesn't want to take a position as being great. He wants to take the position of being a servant. And the reason for this is uh, given a little further on in this chapter. Krishna Premier A. Ek Apurva Prabhav Guru Shama Loghu Ke Korai Dashobhav. Love for Krishna has this one unique effect. <coughs> It imbues superiors, equals, and inferiors with the spirit of service to Krishna. So, hereby it is established that the position of being a servant of Krishna is more relishable than that of being Krishna. Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, but there's more happiness in trying to make him happy than there is in being the the, the receptacle of that happiness, the the object of that, the patra of that happiness. And therefore Lord Chaitanya comes and his uh, associates, including the other forms of the Supreme Lord, they come to taste the happiness of serving Krishna. So this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching. In this material world, everyone is trying to be the master. No one is happy. The more we try to be the master, the more we become unhappy. Or even if we try to be the servant of, 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 an, of an unfit master, we also become unhappy. And there is no fit master in this world. So. Masters and servants, everyone is simply unhappy. So the uh, prominent social philosophy of the modern age is to try to make everyone equal. But that is not possible, as was seen in the attempt. The most famous attempt was in the USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. I can, no, not really. It's equality, samatha. Oh, I see, sorry. Sorry. Were you born during the time, of, any of you, USSR, Rajavilas, you must have. Did you experience the communist time? Others, yeah. So it's not, it, it's not possible to make everyone equal. And the attempt to do so doesn't make anyone happy. Therefore, one should find out the proper master. Bhavanta mevanu charanirantara. Uh, what's the next line? Prashanta nishesha manoratantara. Kadaham aikantika nitya kinkara praharshi yashami sanata divita. This verse from the uh, Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya is quoted here in Chaitanya Charitamrita. When Yamuna Acharya prays in ecstasy, that he is desiring to become 
the eternal servant of Krishna, Narayana, uh, as a result of which he expects that the oscillations of the mind will come to an end and he will become very peaceful in his mind. When, he says, will I become known as your exclusive servitor and become completely blissful, living my life with you as my Lord. So this this highest bliss of identifying oneself as the servant of Krishna is our natural constitutional position. Jibeshwarupoi Krishna Nitodas. That is Chaitanya Mahabhu taught. That is our natural constitutional position to be the servant of Krishna. That's the only way to attain actual happiness is to identify ourselves as the servant of Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda and Advaita, they come to taste the happiness of service to Krishna. But they also act as acharyas because in by personally tasting the nectar of service to Krishna, they demonstrate that to others also. So in... Uh, in this way, the name Advaita Acharya is described. In the Mangalacharam, the auspicious invocation of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, in the first chapter, these two verses, two Sanskrit verses describing Advaita are described, Advaita Prabhu. And those two verses are unpacked or explained in this chapter. So the essence is that uh, Advaita Acharya teaches to be a devotee of Krishna and actually to be the servant of 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 Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's famous teaching to consider, to be very humble, considering oneself to be like a less than a piece of grass. In 19, early 1989, I was in the Arda Kumbh Mela at Allahabad, Prayagraj. So, uh, there was some famous, among so many sadhus there, there was some famous sadhu there. So I went with a godbrother to see him. So we introduced ourselves that we're in the sampradaya of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he asked then, what is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching? What, what is the essence of his teaching? So I offered Trinada Pisu Nichena, this verse. And he said, no, it's Chaito Dharpanamajana, this verse. But he was wrong. <laughs> uh, we heard from Prabhupada. We didn't need to hear from him. Because that chanting of the holy names, it, uh, it, it, the, the effect doesn't happen unless we imbibe this mood of utter humility. Harshe Prabhu Kahe Shuno Shuru Brahm Rai Nam Sankirtan Kalo Paramopa. Yeah, so first Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Surup. Damada and uh, Ramananda Rai, that sang, Nama Sankirtan is the main means in Kali Yuga. But, Ki Rupe Nama Loile Prema Upajoy Tara Lakon Shuno Suru Brahm Rai. Then later Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, What is the way, what is the means of chanting, what is the key by which Prem arises when chanting? So the answer is, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives it himself. Trinada pisu nichena tarori vasa hushna amanina amanadena kirtaniya sadaharihi. And this is the essence of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching. To consider oneself to be utterly insignificant and to always glorify Krishna. And if one glorifies Krishna, he becomes glorious. Aho bata swapa choto gariyan yad jiv ha gai varta te nama tu gyam te pas tapas te juhavur sastra ya brahman ucha nama gurnanti ye te. Even if from the external point of view one is born in a very degraded family, if the holy name of Krishna is always on his tongue, then he surpassed all other stages of Vedic uh, activity. And even though one becomes glorious by such chanting, he thinks the more one chants, the more one becomes advanced, the more humble one becomes. So we can practice that by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, by Advaita Prabhu's mercy, becoming the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant, 
but not the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of anyone else except Krishna. Krishna is the center. To serve people's bodies or minds or to serve someone's country or to serve in some business, that will not help us. But if we don't become the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna, then we have to serve some boss in some company, or we have to serve our mundane family members, or we serve our country, or we serve our senses. Advaita Acharya teaches us who to serve and in which spirit of humility we should serve. All right, I'll finish there. Everyone's a little tired, it seems. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also sometimes got tired after long chanting sessions. Transcendental tiredness. One morning, early morning, he went with his associates and they performed kirtan just around the temple of Jagannath. And as usual, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became absorbed in ecstasy. So the kirtan was going on and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in ecstasy and so they didn't want to stop the kirtan. But by midday, that means about seven hours later, everyone was exhausted. But they didn't want to stop because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in complete ecstasy. He wasn't aware of the time or anything. He was chanting blissfully. So Surup Damada, he thought what to do. The devotees are exhausted, no one took any prasadam, no one did their daily duties. So one by one, he stopped the devotees singing. Not that they just all of a sudden stopped, but gradually. So there was only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left chanting. So gradually the sound decreases and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going on dancing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Then he realizes no one else is chanting. What happened? What happened? And Sri Damada explained to him, you see, actually it's midday and all the devotees have been chanting for seven hours and everyone's tired and, oh, 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 okay, all right. So you have to go and take your bath and take prasadam. Oh, all right. So then, then he took prasad and uh, he had an invitation. So he came back to his uh, residence for taking rest, as was his regular practice. But he just flopped in the doorway. He just came inside and didn't go inside fully. He just fell down in the doorway. And then it's described how Govinda, his servant, came to serve him. But the point I'm making here is that even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he exhibited transcendental tiredness after performing much kirtan. So... I guess we have an excuse also. But if we go on chanting like this throughout our life, then naturally in the next life we'll continue doing the same thing. People live like pigs and dogs and monkeys. In their next life they'll become pigs and dogs and monkeys. And if we chant Hare Krishna throughout our life, then we'll have to go to the place where everyone's chanting Hare Krishna. All by the grace of Sri Advaita Acharya, by whose loud calling... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world. That mercy which we received through Srila Prabhupada. There is a description actually in that book by Mula Prakriti Mataji. Uh, she described that before going to the West, Srila Prabhupada would often come to the uh, place of Advaita Acharya at Shantipur. He was an uh, unknown Vaishnava at that time. He would pray to Advaita, he would sit and chant for hours, chanting Japa, and pray to Advaita Acharya for the mercy to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. So, uh, Narottam Das's prayer, Tava Kripa Bale Pai Chaitanya Nitai, by your mercy, by your, yeah, by your mercy, uh, Advaita Acharya, we can receive Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda. That has been fulfilled through the agency of Srila Prabhupada, who brought the mercy of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda to the whole world. Sri Advaita Acharya Prabhu Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.
fasting this morning. So you can, uh, if the body needs some rejuvenation of energy, then have to chant and get some spiritual energy. But these young boys, they don't have to fast. There's some arrangement for them? Give them fruit. There's lots of fruit. Okay. In Shastra it states that Ekadashi fasting should be observed by everyone from age 8 to 80. But anyway, the, the young boys, you can give them some fruit. Hare Krishna.